Ski Town, North America. Happy Veterans Day to the U.S. of A. and Happy Remembrance Day to our Canadian audience. I'm John Davies with Powder Magazine, here with John Stifter. Hey, John. Hi, John. <laughs> and we're here for the second annual Ski Town Throwdown presented by Liftopia. We started off with 64 ski areas. We're down to 16. We're going to give you some matchup previews now. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting with the Great White North. John, our first matchup happening uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, Revelstoke, BC against Banff. What are you looking for here? Another classic Canadian matchup. Uh, Revelstoke advanced out of the second round beating Whitewater. Now, if you recall Canadian fans, that's like Craig McTavish and Yari Curry facing off against each other at the Flames Oilers. Brutal. So they beat out Whitewater. How many votes? Uh, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Close to 10,000, I believe. I believe you're correct. Now, they're facing off against Banff, and Banff represents three ski areas, and they are really taking it out on the tournament this year, as they were not in the inaugural tournament last year. I think they took it personally. I, I don't doubt that. However, Revelstoke uh, is the number one seed, and they've been really packing a punch this year. So, I don't know, it'll be interesting, but I, I, I see uh, Revelstoke advancing on to the Sweet 16. All right, great. Now, moving on to the lower half of the bracket, we have half of last year's winner, Red Mountain, arguably the entire, the favorite of the entire tournament, uh, against Eagle Crest, who, who is Eagle Crest? What size shoe do you wear? Because they're the Cinderella story oh, this man. year. man, it, it fits. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, Eagle Crest, a 10 seed, they, uh, they beat uh, Whistler Blackcomb in the first round, and they beat a, uh, another um, underrated uh, community in Mount Washington around the 32, advancing on to the Sweet 16. Red Mountain, <clears throat> tremendous uh, press materials coming out of there. They represent one half of the inaugural champions last year. Uh, this one is going to be a battle, but uh, did, did I just hear a phone call? Ye yes, this just in. Um, I'm hearing from the, uh, the American census that the town of Juneau, the population has just increased by five, John. Um, it's the, the Hamiltons. And if, just moved into West Juneau. Correct. And if I'm not mistaken, Timmy, who is a high school junior, has quite the Facebook following. He's the president of the Iditarod team? Yes, yes. The the captain of the local bobsled uh, team. And wow, he's got quite the following. It's going to turn into a really interesting matchup. Now, wow. for everybody in Vegas, keep that in mind uh, with Timmy's uh, emergence onto the scene. The spread has just shifted. Yes. All right, so we will wait and see who moves on to the Elite Eight in the Great White North, but let's take a look uh, who they'll face in the Final Four, whoever gets there. Uh, from the Big East, our first matchup, Mad River Glen against Stowe, the Green State Battle. Yes, I, uh, you can already hear the agginess going on. Uh, I think they're having a syrup fight right now. Really, I think this comes down to the Champlain Beaver Hockey Organization, how much they're able to sway the Stowe vote. Now, Mad River, Single chair, uh, you know. You know, they, they don't share chairlifts, but they, uh, they do share Facebook posts and uh, votes quite well. So we'll, we'll see. Formidable opponent. This one's going to be a grudge match to the very end. We will see, no doubt. Absolutely. And then on uh, the upper half of the bracket, Bohemia, the lone Midwest representative, uh, taking on Sugarbush, yet another Vermont powerhouse. No doubt, and I think you have to look at Vermont here as the favorite. However, if Bob Seeger writes a new track for Mount Bohemia in the UP, they could easily advance on to the Elite Eight. We will see. All right, so let's take a look here at the Rocky Mountain West. Then we have Sun Valley, who was a 16 seed as a result of pretty low snowfall, taking on Jackson. Um, again, wow, a couple of really great places, great communities. What do you like here? You know, Sun Valley didn't show up last year in the inaugural tournament, uh, so they were overlooked, uh, the 16th seed, but they've, they've uh, you know, they've played some good matches thus far, but they're uh, facing off against a real powerhouse in Jackson. Everybody knows uh, about on-hill talent in Jackson, but off-hill, well, that's been a little bit surprising. They defeated Bridger, which was a real favorite, almost a Final Four shoe-in, probably the upset of the tournament thus far in some, some uh, respects. So. I look to uh, look for this one to be just a real classic ski town matchup, but I don't I don't know if you can um, beat the brute of Jackson, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> now in the uh, lower half of the bracket, the winner of Jackson Sun Valley will face the winner of Big Sky and Crested Butte. Now Crested Butte just went toe to toe, a real barn burner against Aspen last week, but now they're up against yet another tough opponent, in Big Sky. What do you like here? 
Get this, folks. Aspen supposedly took out an ad on Denver's local NBC affiliate uh, in order to defeat Crested Butte, but they still fell a few votes shy. Crested Butte advancing thanks to some graffiti tagging going on around town, and they uh, were demanding a Facebook vote for admission into a bar uh, in order to drink an avalanche cocktail. So. Crested Butte uh, has definitely been the surprise of the tournament. They got a great local community in Crested Butte with the, you know, college uh, vote coming from Gunnison. But they're facing off against Big Sky. You know, a real powerhouse, big slopes. Kind of, you know, we'll see what we'll see what they do. But I'm looking for Crested Butte to continue the momentum. They're as hot as NBA Jam right now. Boom shakalaka, John. <laughs> All right, in our final region here, it's the Far West. Now, uh, in our first matchup. Taking place on Thursday and Friday, we have Schweitzer, your boys out of Idaho, and uh, Kirkwood, the last representative out of uh, the Tahoe region. Yeah, Schweitzer's already defeated two uh, Sierra representatives in Sugar Bowl and Mammoth. Now, Kirkwood, <coughs> they uh, defeated Squaw in a real North Lake, South Lake battle there. Squaw, or excuse me, Kirkwood, you know, they're just coming on the grid after being off the grid. Uh, I guess the dial-up is really cranking yeah, there. Yeah, it's going full steam. People are signing up for Facebook left and right. Right. Now, Schweitzer, they advanced to the Final Four last year, and they've been doing pretty well thus far. I think this one is going to be really close. We'll see who comes out on top, but I would not be surprised if Schweitzer looks to advance to the Elite Eight and get close to another Final Four appearance. If they do, John, they'll face the winner of Mount Baldy, yet another 16 seed, um, and they're facing Stevens Pass. They'll face the winner of Mount Baldy, Stevens Pass. Now, what, what's happening here? Mount Baldy, they're open like, what, 10 days a year? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's about right. I mean, David Reddick might know that answer, as he was the last person to ski there in 1989. However, they are making t shirts, uh, $10 t shirts, uh, to get out the vote, which has certainly helped them out. This one is, uh, you know, a battle between uh, the city of Los Angeles and the city of Leavenworth. A little different. Um, I see Stevens probably advancing. They've kind of, you know, they've had some so-so matchups. They, you know, they've kind of squeaked by, but uh, they've definitely had the easiest path to the Sweet 16 thus far. So. I, I'm going to go with the likely pick here and take Stevens on to the Elite Eight. All right, you heard it here first, folks. That's our Sweet 16 matchup previews. Now, voting lasts two days now and users can vote every 24 hours. So uh, log in and then log in again the next day and come right back here to Powder.com as we preview the Elite Eight in a couple more weeks.